what's up guys in this video i'll show you how to procedurally create this walking path in a graveyard so if you are new to this channel make sure to watch the previous video that i'll put it in the link here as well in which we actually followed how to create this procedural graveyard as you can see this is all procedural using procedural content generation where i can move this path in a spline and it will automatically adjust not only that there would not be any grass in that and also it would not collide with the grass or anything um, also there would not be any stone on the path and so that's how we are creating this this is all procedural i'm using pcz graph to get started let's jump into unreal engine 5.2 now <music> As you can see from the previous video we had done, we just created a procedural graveyard where we had a procedural scattering, also some rocks and grass which were non-colliding with the cross, uh, not the, uh, actually the rock not colliding with the grass. So now we'll create a procedural path in here. Uh, we'll use the same PCZ framework and um, uh, to get started what we can do is uh, we'll create a new blueprint class and this is actually for a spline actor so that would be an actor type uh, go ahead and give a name whatever you feel like maybe that would be pp underscore path or something like that um, and then what we will do is we'll go ahead and add a, um, a spline component in here um, yeah, and once the spline component is added, make sure to drag so that we remove the default scene. And yeah, that's all we need. But only another thing that we might need to do is act, go ahead and uh, type in a tag on the detail and add in this tag because we will use this to refer inside our uh, PCZ uh, to get a reference for that. Um, yep, that's the graph that we have added. So we'll go ahead and compile and save. Um, another thing actually what we could do is um, in here go to the detail uh, there should be a scene um, width I believe uh, that's what we need so this helps you to debug actually see it better I think it's a scale width I think uh, if I remember correctly yeah, and that would be on the, on the spline itself. So make sure it's just so that we can see it big and we can visualize it better. And now go ahead and compile and save and then go to the scene. Now go ahead and drag and drop the, the, the BP's uh, path in there. Uh, it might be too small for you to see at the moment, but so to help with that, what we'll do is we'll go to PCZ and then basically type in E on that uh, spline the actor spawner or static mesh spawner and then we'll clear that so we can see it easily now I can go ahead and drag this the spline handles and also another thing I can do is actually uh, use this handles and drag it and if you were to press alt and drag it will add the points so basically which we can use that as later so I'm just adding two points here clicking alt and then dragging and then I'm just adjusting this spline in here. So now you can see we have a path. Uh, this is the path on which we, well, this is a spline. This is where we want to populate the object. So now we'll be in here. Now we are here inside the PCZ and we'll do get spline data. And once we get that, that's very similar to get actor data that we have used before. So we'll go to actor filter, all world actor by tag. And we have provided a tag called path, which we had seen inside the blueprint earlier. And that's the tag in a detail that you can see that should be on the BP path. So that's what we are using here to refer, make a reference for that. Uh, next we'll drag from the get spline data and do get spi spline sampler. So basically we can sample the spline if we were to debug. We don't see much, there are some points that you can see, um, but we can use this to view better by using the uh, bounce modifier. So make sure the spline sampler 
actually we'll use by distance so that you know it's even within this when we uh, use the items to populate um, instead of subdivision um, and then for distance increment we'll do by 100 and then from the spine sampler we'll do we'll get a bounds modifier and in the bounds modifier we can actually make it bigger so it actually looks like a path so if we were to go back actually we need to what we need to do is um, we need to make sure we are visualizing in here so I'll make sure type D in here and then click on the bounce modifier type D uh, press the key D so that will help us to debug and as you can see this looks more like a path that we want to create uh, up to that cross okay um, yeah and then from the bounce modifier we'll drag and get this spawn actor spawn actor is uh, very much similar to static mess actor but here we can define the template type uh, we'll be using a decal actor and then we'll do no no merging for the option because uh, we want that to be seamless and once we do that we get a lot of option in the template actor there's option called decal so just uh, open up the decal and there should be a decal material and for the decal material, I'll be using a material that I've downloaded from the Quixel uh, Mega Scan called M underscore Wet Soil. And I will also show you where you can download this. Um, as you can see now, we have a path that is filled with the decal. Not only that, we also see the stone also filled with that. So if you were to take a look at where to download this uh, Quixel asset, um, so this is the wet so in home wet soil you'll find this decal you can download whatever you want but I clicked on this uh, download it and add it to my project and this is what we get so pretty much it decaled um, even the rocks the of course the landscape and some portion of the cross as well which we can get rid of it later and what we can do is this is what generating that decal um, so we can use the transform points to actually change the size of this uh, the uh, procedural content as well kind of like what we looked in um, before as well maybe I'll change some scale min and max um, I did run into some issues before here as well which I'll show you later um, so I basically changed from, I think I went from 0 0.1 to 0.4 and that makes it look more like a path. Um, yeah. And you, you can play around to adjust your setting and this makes it look more like a path um, in the, you know, in the scene. Um, yeah, pretty much like a small path. You can also make it look like footsteps or stuff like that using this change. Next, now we'll enable this grass by typing E. And as you can see, um, there is a path going, but it is not very clear at the moment because the grass is covering it up. And um, yeah, I think I went back, I tried to change some numbers. Um, uh, just to see and make you feel what it looks like as you can see the decal has covered the grass the rocks and everything that comes in here so we basically need to exclude them from our static mess spawner so go to your static mess spawner type in a decal and then wherever you see the receive decal just uncheck them so that it would get away from your scene and there you have it. Uh, the grass doesn't have a decal anymore. Now we'll do the same thing for the rock. So we'll go to the rock static mesh spawner, type in decal and then just receive decal and then remove it. And now the decal is removed from here. Um, I think I also did for the cross as well. Um, but yeah, pretty much the, 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 I'm just showing you here as well if the decal is affecting the cross. And I think it did and I went to the cross and type in the decal and then you can just do the remove receive decal and um, I had to redo this portion but you'll see in the video that it gets repeated 
um, and there you see the path underneath the scene but what we need to do is we actually want this path to be clear of grass or rock for that we'll go to PCZ and we'll use a similar uh, the node that we had created called difference and this will try to subtract the the spline data from the grass so basically I'll remove this in here and get it to the source as original nothing changes in here yet of course and then what we'll do is we'll get this transform points from the spline and put it on to the difference or I could also add a bounding box in between to modify that as well which I think I will do here in a second just to adjust the size and stuff um, and yeah with the different selected uh, make sure it is of um, it should be the uh, density function should be binary and yeah it should be inferred next i also added the bounce modifier in between those two so that you can adjust the size um, which i will not go over here because i think we have already done too much of bounce modifier as you can see i had to redo this step because yeah I, for some reason it did not retain the setting but now there's no grass the path is cle almost clear there are some rocks uh, now we need to remove the rocks but for the moment uh, this is procedural the procedurally we were able to remove the grass from the scene next to remove the um, uh, the rocks as you can see I'm showing you explanation of deleting the points by showing you debugging and then showing you what what is getting deleted from what in here Next, to remove the um, the rocks from the path, what we'll do is we'll use this merge node and then basically from the cross and then the rock, we can remove that. So I'll create this merge node, get this actor data plugged into that one, and then also get the transform points from the spline itself into this merge. So we are combining both of them and we want to remove that from the rock so I'll use this output as the difference in here now if I were to save you can see the rocks actually is gone so this was how you would be able to you know procedurally create this path um, inside this graveyard scene now if I were to use this PP and then modify the position you can see that wherever I move the path the rocks actually disappear from there and so are the grasses so it's very easy to you know modify it and play around hopefully this made sense to you and this was easy to follow along you know if you found this video helpful make sure to subscribe and stay tuned to my channel i'll be creating a lot more contents and and type in your questions too if you have any questions uh, for me to tackle or anything you want me to you know so it to you so go ahead and play with this and try it. And if you create a new scene, tag me as well. If you were to create as Sappy Dev, okay. And then, yeah, this would be awesome to see and follow your guys' progress as well. Um, until then, uh, stay cool, keep learning. And let me know if you have any questions. I'm happy to help anyone with your Unreal Engine journey. Also. Make sure to put in a request for what kind of videos you would like me to create and I'll see you on the next video.